Thank you for joining us, uh, everyone, today. This video is going to be on understanding the different types of retirement accounts. Obviously, this is a, a big topic. For some people, it may be something you already know. For other people, it may be a lot of educational stuff. And I think this is very important to talk about because anyone who's starting out or if you've already contributed, understanding what you have or what you may have is very important as you're growing your investments and deciding what to spend or not spend throughout retirement. How to pass during estate planning, it kind of focuses on everything that you do. Because I think the reality is in, in today's world is this is a big investment, a big tool that everyone has access to. The biggest thing I want to do today is explain to people what that stuff looks like and how it all functions. That being said, we'll kind of get right into it today. All right, so understanding different types of retirement accounts. Biggest thing I like to talk about is what's different now than it used to be. Because the way the accounts are set up right now is it's a lot different than it ever has been because back in 1983, a lot of what you had was different. Typically, your biggest piece of income was your pension. The next biggest piece was your Social Security. And the biggest piece after that was your nest egg. The way it is now is that triangle is basically flipped. The way the triangle is now is the biggest piece in most cases is your nest egg, then your Social Security. And then you're lucky if you do have, have a pension. For some people, like state employees, teachers, you may still have a very large pension and, and you may have the older triangle back there. But it's important to understand how big of an asset and how big of a tool a nest egg is because when you retire or you plan, they basically say, hey, you got to make this until the day that you die. But unfortunately, no one really knows when that could be. Could be five years into retirement, could be 30 years into retirement. Obviously, don't wish you lived along too long because that's, you know, to some people, that's a bad thing. So, but. Important to talk about what that is and what that looks like. First thing that you can do, a traditional IRA. Okay, what a traditional IRA is, is that you get tax deductions on your contributions. If you do this through your employer, it might be called a 401k, a 403b, a deferred comp. There's tons of different titles for it. Inside of there, you have a tax deferred portion. What happens is, is when you do a traditional IRA contribution, you get the tax deduction on your taxes. You've already paid taxes on what came out. So you get the tax deduction back on your tax returns. Now, if you do a 401k, you automatically get the deduction. So what happens is, is let's say you save a hundred bucks. In reality, maybe you only miss $75 out of your paycheck because it's pre-tax contributions. It's tax deferred growth until you withdraw it. Typically, you can't take that withdrawal until 59 and a half. There are some exceptions for early retirement. Uh, deferred comp has some different exceptions there. And you have to take money out of that. You're required to at 72. So if you decide you don't ever want to spend it and let it grow and you don't use it for retirement, at 72, you have to take it out. It's required. And the amount that you have to take out gets more and more every year. I want to say at 72 right now, it's about 3.65%-ish, and it goes up slowly every year. So it's important to understand what that is. Second piece, a Roth IRA. What a Roth IRA is, it's very similar to a traditional IRA where it's a you get some type of benefit for contributing to it, but it's after-tax dollars. So we talked about contributing 100 bucks. In reality, if you wanted to contribute 100 bucks, you pay tax on the hundred because it's after it's after tax and whatever's left over you're contributing in, and obviously that's what's going to grow the benefit of having a Roth is you pay tax now but it grows tax free so you don't have to when you take it out you don't pay tax on it you get tax-free growth and withdrawals in retirement as of right now this could change but there is no RMDs required on this so required minimum distributions at 72 does not apply to the Roth currently you can do this inside of your 401k any type of retirement account you have through your employer what it's called is just called after after tax contributions. It's not specifically called Roth IRA. It may say Roth on there, but just so you know, there's different terminology and what it is. Employer sponsored plans. Inside of that account, you can have employer sponsored plans. They can be a 401k, 403b. There's a lot of different things out there. Obviously, I have a little bit of info listed here for some of those, but the important part is that they function very similar to your a regular IRA, whether traditional or Roth. The biggest difference being is the contribution limits are different, the way you contribute is different, and they give you an employer match. I mentioned a big tool that you use for retirement is your employer-sponsored plan, typically a 401k because the company will offer you a match. They started doing that after they took away pensions to incentivize people to contribute and give you some type of benefit from the employer. On average, I would typically say if you're contributing, at least do the match because they're giving you free money. Obviously, you can't really access that number one until you're vested or number two until you retire typically without a penalty. So important to understand what's there. There's also a 457 plan. There's a lot of different stuff out there. And there's also some self-employed retirement accounts. What those ones typically are is stuff you can contribute on your own. I'm not going to go with too in-depth on that stuff because it's different for everyone. There's so many different things, but if you'd have questions, reach out to someone and, and find out what you can and can't do. Choosing the right plan. Factors to consider. Current income and tax bracket. A big question I always get asked is, hey, Tim, what's better, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? What should I do? There's no real correct answer because tax brackets could be higher in the future. So taking a deduction now may, may make more sense. 
um, if tax brackets or you have less income in the future. But if tax brackets are higher, maybe you do the Roth. The biggest thing I say is take a look at your current income and tax bracket, your employer benefits, future income expectations, and the flexibility and withdrawal options. It's a little bit different for everyone, but it's important to understand there's no right or wrong decision. My rule of thumb is it's good to have both, and I'll explain why in a second here. The reason why it's really nice to have both, because I kind of talk about the buckets of money approach when I talk about investing and retirement planning and estate planning. Typically, you have three buckets of money you can draw from throughout your time when you're, you're retired and while you're working. Number one is tax deferred. That's your pre-tax money, the money that grows and then you pay tax when you pull out. It's your traditional IRA money. All of that money, when you take it out, is considered ordinary income. So it's taxed at an ordinary income rate. The downside of that bucket is obviously we live in a progressive tax bracket. So the more you make, the higher your taxes are. So making sure you don't take too much out of that bucket because you can pay way more than you want to in taxes because it's progressive. Okay. So obviously on part of that, you're going to get the lower tax rate, but once you hit over a certain limit, it all hits at that next limit. Third bucket, I'll go over the third one first, tax-free. That's what we talked about. That's the Roth IRA portion. The Roth IRA portion gets you that after-tax growth. So anything out of that bucket, you don't pay tax on. Okay, it doesn't count towards your tax brackets typically. The second bucket is your taxable bucket. I didn't talk about this at all because it's not a retirement account. This is a, what's called a non-qualified account. The easiest way to explain it, it's like a savings account that you invest. Okay, you pay, pay taxes that typically on it every year. If you have growth, Sometimes if you don't have growth, but that's a whole nother animal. That being said, it's another bucket there because what typically happens is any money you put in, it's called the cost basis, you don't already pay the tax on. And any of the growth, you you know typically pay tax on every year. There may be some unrealized gains in there, but typically it gives you some flexibility there. Why it's important to have all three is because what my job is as an advisor when someone comes to me is talking to them and determining, hey, I want to, let's say you're at $66,000 of income as a couple and your next tax bracket's 88%, typically where the the realm hits. You have about $12,000 you can take out before you get to the next tax bracket, and this specific scenario bumps up about 10%. So anything above $88,000, you're at a 10% tax bracket. What I tell people is, is play within the brackets. Well, in this scenario, you need 30 grand. Let's take out $12,000 out of your tax deferred bucket this year, and then make up the difference out of your taxable and tax-free bucket. Or take out $12,000 this year, and then let's say it's you need it in December, take out $12,000 this year in December, and then $12,000 in January, and now you're splitting the tax years, it's two different tax years. So it's a lot of things you can do to take advantage of some of that stuff to put yourself in a lot better of a position. It's just understanding that you have to get enough there to be able to be flexible with it. I hope this educated some people on what, you know, what some of your options are, how they work. This is what my job is. So I like to educate people on what this stuff is. And that way you can be more educated, whether you're just going into retirement, you're choosing what asset to pass, or you're looking to what to contribute. Hopefully this helps you out. Thanks again and talk soon.